So, you have decided that you absolutely have to embed a Power App into your Power BI report. I'm not going to stop you, but I will, however, give you a few points to consider before you jump in with both feet and have a less than enjoyable experience. I have four points for you to consider. Number one, what tables need to be in direct query mode versus import modes? Number two, navigation. Should you use Power BI for navigation or Power Apps? Number three, look and feel versus refresh strategy trade-offs. And number four, your development environment. So let's look at all of them in detail. Number one, what tables should be in direct query mode versus import modes? So here's a quick hint. If you would like to see charts on the report refresh as entries are being made in your app, that the data for those charts should probably come from the direct query tables. However, you do not have to make all tables in direct query mode. So if you do not have to make them um, direct query for performance or modeling considerations, then don't. Also, the table that feeds into the Power App visual does not have to be in direct, wor direct query mode either. So let's take a look at this example here. In the bottom right chart, we see two line charts we see the pink line that shows the, um, the forecast value and the blue line that shows the actuals. The forecast values um, have to be refreshed as I create my forecast in the Power App above. However, my blue line, the actuals, could come from a very large table that could have millions or hundreds of millions of rows. Therefore, in order to pull my forecast and have it refresh as I make entries in the Power App, that table that feeds the pink line has to be in a direct query mode. The table that drives the actuals or the blue line doesn't have to be in a direct query mode. In fact, for performance reasons, I chose to keep it in the dual or import mode. Number two, navigation. Generally speaking, I would recommend that you use Power BI for navigation using slicers as opposed to using Power Apps navigation. This decision will have some consequences if you use Power Apps navigation, then you can have the main screen in your Power App that will navigate to screen A or screen B, depending on what your user needs to do. For example, screen A could be enter budget screen and screen B could be enter forecast screen. However, I would recommend that you build two Power Apps, one for budget and one for forecast, and then embed each of them as appropriate into your Power BI pages. Let's look at how I've implemented navigation in this report. So we have a Power App that you see at the top right. And then in order for me to pick a different selection criteria, I have a user go to filters where they can select from different planning cycles, different versions, different countries, and so forth. And then these filters slash slicer selections are then fed into the Power App. And that makes it very easy for the user to navigate. Number three, look and feel versus refresh strategy trade-offs. I already made a video explaining why you can't have your cake and eat it too. Please see the link in description. You either pick a control over the look and feel and lack of refresh control from the Power App or have the refresh control from the Power App but you're stuck with scroll bars on your Power App if you need to make any adjustments to the default size of the app. Let me demonstrate. So in this screen we see a Power App looking beautiful and uh, working beautiful. My might I say, however, uh, if you if we take a look at the code behind this app, so this is what the app looks like. When you hit the save, it executes this patch command. And you will see that unlike the other Power App, let me demonstrate in a sec. Uh, in the other Power App that I have, I have this code here that says Power BI integration dot refresh. So it's this code here that allows me to refresh my page my ref report page when I click on the save button. However, um, what happens when I create the app from the Power BI report, that's the only time when this capability is available. Again, please see my video in the description uh, that goes into depth for that. So um, if you create the Power App from inside Power BI, you will be able to call on refresh method of the Power BI integration object. So Power BI integration object is also available if you create your own Power App. However, Power BI integration object in this scenario will not support the refresh method. 
So if you build the app from scratch, uh, you will have control over the look and feel, and you will not have the scroll bars. I will show you them in a second, but you will not be able to uh, refresh when you hit save. So you have to implement different refresh strategies um, to be able to pass the new values into your report. If you build the Power App from Power BI, or rather you trigger the creation of the Power App from the Power BI, you do get this option to refresh when you hit save. However, you lose any control over the size of the report of, of your app. And this is what you end up with. So you see, in this case, we, we have a beautiful app. It's embedded perfectly. There's no scroll bars. And now we're looking at a different page. And you see that in this case, um, you do have the scroll bars. So I'm not going to show you how the app works. Just take my word for it. In this scenario, if I make my changes, hit save, the report will refresh right away by the virtue of me hitting the save. And in this scenario, when you see the power app that looks with, that does not have any scroll bars, uh, I had to implement some, uh, the refresh strategy for the screen, for the page in order to pass the, the new values from the power app into this report. Finally, number four is power app embedding has to be done in the Power BI service. Doing it in Power BI Desktop does not work well, if at all. So you should probably do everything you need to do from the design modeling perspective in the desktop first, and then, as the last stop, uh, step, publish the PBIX file in the service and then finish the embedding process there. So here I just wanted to demonstrate what happens after you make the changes that you want to make you, you, with respect to embedding in the service, and then you try to save the desktop back, back on your hard drive and try to edit it. So you see that uh, sometimes this embed works and sometimes it doesn't work. So, um, so for n right now, uh, this app is no longer connected. We get an error message. The only way for me to fix it is to delete this uh, chart, uh, create a new Power App chart and reconnect it to my app. It's annoying and convenient, and um, um, if I'm in the middle of development process, it's probably going to be pretty distract distracting. So my advice is to finalize your report layout, implement all the calculation, and then as a very last step, publish it, hook it up to your Power App, and call it a day. Hope you found this video informative, and I'm looking forward to seeing you back again soon. Thanks. Bye.